First of all, let's talk about the assignment. So, do you guys prefer to do an exam in the midterm, an assignment for the final test, or assignment for the midterm, an exam for the final test? You can't decide. We're going to do assignment and exam. But which do you prefer, the assignment for the final test, or assignment for the midterm test? Assignment for final test. I prefer assignment for final test. And midterm test is. I think midterm is better because you have another class in another time. That's almost the final test, right? What do you mean? The mid the assignment is the better for the midterm? Yeah. So let's have a vote then. Who thinks assignment for the midterm test? Who thinks assignment for the final test? I'm going to tell you about this. I'm so the topic is find a well-known negotiation and analyze the negotiation. Okay, so you have last year the US and China made a negotiation about climate change. Okay? Or the US and Iran recently made a negotiation. Or some companies can also make a negotiation. Okay? Google made a negotiation with the EU. So you can go back into the past. So find just some well-known negotiation. Find information about the negotiation. Who are the parties we're going to discuss during the setting up the negotiation? What are their interests? What is their no-deal option? Do they use any tactics or strategies? So this document is on the website, right? Uh, do they, in the end, who got did they create any value and who claimed the value? Who got the best value in the negotiation? And conclusion. Okay, and so just three to four pages with the in length. And then that's twenty percent. And then you, the presentation is just you come here and just talk about it. Right? What you this what you found out. So two points for the structure including introduction and conclusion, two points for communication skill, and six points for do you know about and understand your topic. That's the story for the presentation. This presentation, we make a team. Hmm? We make a team or a team? Yes. We have 12 students, so we have four groups of three students. Four groups of three students each. Okay, so do you prefer to do this in the midterm for week 8 or for have a test in week 8 and do in week 15? Did anybody change their mind? No? So this one then will be in week 15. In week 8 we will have the test with multiple choice and short questions. So just as we are going through the course, it's better if you choose early your group, who's in your group and you choose an idea about what negotiation you're going to use, then as we go through the course, you can be thinking about how does it relate to your negotiation, right? Then it means you don't have to do a lot of work at the end, okay? If we're studying about these things, then you can think about your negotiation and those things. Maybe you can even do it at that time, okay? Then it makes it easier at the end. So we'll also talk about later about doing a little bit about teamwork, or what, well, we we can talk about it today, I suppose. It's uh, and uh, how to do the teamwork. Have you studied before about how to do teamwork? Hmm? Yes. You have. How should you do teamwork? What can you tell us about? What's a successful teamwork? Okay. Listen to everybody in the team. Anything else? Hmm? 
make rules, basic rules for the team, yes? Anything else? Make deadlines or a facilitator for somebody to do the deadline. Anything else? Thank You're doing well. It's a good team leader. Facilitator is a better word than leader, right? Anything else? document about teamwork. <laughs> so I'll just real briefly, I think it's a useful skill to have anyway. So it's always useful to study about teamwork, but it helps you to do your presentation, right? So first of all, get to know the other members of your groups. What are they good at? What are they weak at? Set some ground rules. Use a facilitator. Always keep the communication open and know how to solve the common problems. So the basic rules you make is about the work. How are we going to distribute the work? Who is going to make the deadlines? What happens if somebody doesn't do what they said they would do? What happens if people, very common ones, some people like to do the assignment early, other people want to do the assignment late. So just we discuss about those things and make a kind of rules at the start, so we're all on the same page. Facilitator, are we going to use, do you understand facilitator? What does facilitator mean? What does it mean to facilitate? It's a kind of leader, but not What's the difference between lead and facilitate? Why do they use the word facilitate instead of lead? Another word for facilitate in English? Help, help things to happen. Why? Right? Facilitate is helping things to happen. Okay? Do you know facilities? Have you heard the word facilities? Yes. So we talk about facilities for disabled people. Okay? Like a ramp. It helps them. Instead of going up the steps, they can go up the ramp. It's helping, making life easier. Right? Facilitating, making life easier or helping. How is that different from leading? What's the difference between facilitating and leading? Leader is to uh, point to point to move the, our team's goal, but possibly to guide the, them. Yes. So the leader is telling them where to go, right? Maybe giving orders. But facilitating is just helping or helping them to do that. So you can have different types of leadership style. Some leaders are facilitators. They know that their workers, employees, are good workers and they just want to give them the right environment or the right support so that their workers can use their own ability to do a good job, right? Other people like to be telling people what to do exactly. You have to do this, you have to do this, and checking and controlling, right? If you don't do that, then you're out, right? That kind of thing. So we're not, in this idea, we're using the, that's important choice of word, facilitator, right? So how will we use the facilitator? What will the facilitator do? What are their responsibilities? Okay, example of responsibility is just making some time, right? Or organizing the email addresses. Everybody shares their email address, right? Communication, how are we going to communicate? Kakao talk or email or just that class. Meeting, are we going to have a meeting? What's a good time? Consideration, can we smoke at the meeting? Can we eat at the meeting? Right? Can we, what if somebody is not comfortable? 
Then we talk about our goals. Do you understand goals? Yes. Some students, their goal is to get an A+. Plus. But other students, maybe this course is not important for them. Another course is more important, so they don't have as much time. Another student, maybe they want to just improve their teamwork, right? Or improve their communication skill. They're not worried about the score. Okay? So different students can have different goals. So if you discuss with the other student in your group, you can understand their goals. It helps. Okay, some suggestions for the facilitator. Keep sure, to make sure the team is focused on the task, not wasting time. Okay? So if you go to the meeting and you are just talking about the football game yesterday for 30 minutes, right? Then the facilitator makes sure that you stop talking about the football game and start talking about the project. Okay? Make sure everybody participates. So you're talking all the time and she doesn't say anything. What should the facilitator do? Just a random example. I'm not picking on you. He's like the part. How? Make a smart Make a smart talk. If we are focused to the topic, mm -hmm. she speak small. We can make a small talk at the start of the meeting to make her feel more comfortable, right? But during the meeting, she's not giving her opinion, just you're giving your opinion. And she's just saying, yes, yes. <laughs> you're the facilitator, what are you going to do? Uh, ask a question about related to the topic. To who? What about him? He's talking all the time. What are you going to do? <laughs> Tell him, shut up! <laughs> You're talking too much! Shut up! <laughs> like that? No? Then what are you going to do? Keep quiet. Be quiet! <laughs> How do you feel, Matt? Okay, sit and open. Are you going to work hard in this group? You have to think about that, right? So maybe you can just tell him that you appreciate his ideas, right? But you want to hear a little bit more from the other group members, okay? That's a more polite way to say those things, right? Uh, so get participation from all the team members. Keep the team to the time frame. Suggest some alternative procedure if we're stalled. Help the team members with problems, right? So you two guys are fighting. Okay, uh, let's say that uh, <coughs> you drank too much the other night and you said something not nice to her friend. So she doesn't like you. You're fighting. What are you going to do? You're the facilitator. They're, they're fighting. He was rude to her friend. She doesn't like him. They're constantly fighting. Maybe I should say, uh, focus on the, on this project, not the personal emotion. Okay, so I suggest that they don't forget about the personal emotion, right? You can try to be a mediator a little bit, right? Maybe you can get him to apologize to her friend, right? So facilitator is helping to the group. You can also rotate the facilitator position. One person doesn't have to be the facilitator all the time, right? You could do facilitator for a couple of weeks, somebody, somebody else. So then let's discuss with your partner. If somebody is overly talkative, what should you do? Not such a big problem in Korea, but uh, if you are in a group with the foreign students, they tend to dominate against the Asian students, they have different culture, right? So what should you do if somebody is overly talked to? Discuss with your partner. So if you don't have a partner, sit next to somebody, so you can discuss together.
Okay, so 2 a on the sun, so? Yes, what would you do? <laughs> Sometimes you can use it here. We suggest sometimes humor can be. We can use humor, right? So we could make some joke about the other person talking a lot, right? Then they might get the idea. Okay. Uh, then here I said, look, explain them that we appreciate your enthusiasm, right? But it should be fair that people get to speak more often. Okay. So the quiet, the quiet person, ask them their opinion. Right? Ask them to tell you about themselves. Tell them you appreciate their participation. It's a very simple thing, right? The person is very shy or quiet, tell them, we appreciate your participation, we want to know what you think. Okay? Arguing. Okay. Critical. Do you have any friend who's very negative? Do you understand negative? They always criticize. You have an idea, they say, no, that won't work. <laughs> There's two things in the world that's very easy to do. One is spending other people's money, and two is criticizing other people's ideas. Right? Very easy to say. It won't work. But you should be able to give some solution, right? But if a person is very critical, most of these it's the same thing, right? Talk to them nicely and tell them very simple thing. Your negative or criticizing behavior is making bad atmosphere in the team. Okay? So please don't have such always negative attitude. Okay? So there's a different thing between doing that and, and going to them and saying, why are you always negative? Right? You're ruining the group. You're ruining the group. This group is going to get D because of you. <laughs> Your negativity. Right? Do you understand the difference? the same thing but different way of telling the message. Okay? So I'll just smiling. Uh, you should have the nice body language. So my boss told me before when you're giving that kind of feedback, when somebody is looking from 10 meters away, they should think that you're having a very happy and pleasant conversation if they look at your body language. Right? You look at people's body language sometimes, they're like this, like that, right? <laughs> You can tell that they're fighting. You can see their voice is loud and they're doing this kind of thing and it looks bad. So when you're talking to the people, you have to be very nice, right? So stand in front of them. You're talking like that, right? <laughs> so I mean that you don't like the ideas, but if you're always very negative in the group, then you can have bad effect on the group over the long term. <laughs> Okay. So somebody is looking from over there, they think we're having a nice and pleasant conversation. Okay? So the same about complaining. Uh, here we have a problem with not making a decision. So discuss with your group what are you going to do if you don't agree about the decision. Right? Maybe he thinks one thing, she thinks another thing. Or just you can't make a decision in the group. What are you going to do? Well, discuss with your partner first. Can't make a decision in your group. What are you, people don't agree? What are you going to do?
Somebody who's exaggerating, they're not doing any work. They keep saying, oh, I'll do that, and then they just then they do nothing. I discuss with your partner, how are you going to deal with that person? This is too much. Yes. What would you do with the free rider? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Kim Gongju, what would you do? directly with the person. Don't ignore it, okay? If you just ignore it, it can make worse problems. So talk directly with them and tell them the effect they're having on the group. They're having a bad effect on the group, right? In the end, if it doesn't work, you can make a rule at the start, right? So that's the point about making rules, right? You make a rule. <coughs> what happens if people don't do what they say they do, right? Then you make a rule. If people are constantly not doing, then we'll talk to the professor about that person, right? So they know that rule from the start. Okay, so that can tend to help to avoid the problem in the first place. Okay. So do you have any questions about teamwork? You all did teamwork before? Yes. Yes? What what can you remember a team that did a good job? Why did it do a good job? So discuss with your partner. Some team you were involved in that did a good job. Why did it do a good job? What was good about the teamwork? Think about a successful teamwork you had. Okay? Why, why was it successful? Why did the team work well together? Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so Yang Yong Sok. Yes. Did you ha ever have a successful teamwork? Yes, why was it successful? and managing the group. Okay. So then, now what did you learn from the team leader? In team work, leader must be. <coughs> in team work, leader must be. Let's do it. What do you mean by best work? Mm -hmm. Academically or at making relationships? Making relationships. Okay, a communication skill. Mm -hmm. So you think the best leader is the one with the best communication skill? Do you guys have good communication skills? No? Say Korea or what? Say Korea or what? In both. Generally. Do you have good communication skills? You can always improve your communication skills, right? So I, I had to improve my communication skills before because I wasn't assertive enough. So when people were doing some wrong thing, I wasn't telling them that they were doing the wrong thing, right? So that's a problem. So you need to be able to communicate to people when they're doing the wrong thing, otherwise you're going to end up being bullied or overran, right? And teamwork could be bad too, because you don't get your voices not heard, right? So uh, I try to improve my wife's communication skills, so she just tells me like, Why didn't you clean the kitchen? <laughs> right? And then I say, why don't you tell me nicely? <laughs> then I say, let's sit down on the sofa together and smile and <laughs> tell me, Chris, please take more care about cleaning the kitchen in future. <laughs> right? Then I say, why don't you do it like that? So I, my wife doesn't want to do that. So then I have to try to train her, right? I have to... If she talks like that, then I don't clean the kitchen. <laughs> right? So if she sits down with me and very nicely says, Chris, can you clean the kitchen more often because I like a clean house? Then I, <laughs> then I say, yes, okay. Then I clean the kitchen more often, right? So you can... Try to also to improve your communication skills, okay? There's no reason to <clears throat> make the other people annoyed or angry, right? So if you guys get married, you can use that strategy too. Don't have to pay me any money. It's free, free advice. <laughs> right? Very deep also for you guys, right? If your husband is talking to you in a mean way, or your boyfriend, right? You can tell them that they just need to communicate their message in a nice way, okay? Then it's better for everybody. So, <coughs> that's the way we should do whatever about our personal relationship at home. In the workplace, where we have the professional relationship, we should communicate like in the proper way with people, okay? so we can get better results on the team together everybody is happy especially in Asia harmony is important right? so the team goal can be to get a high grade but also that everybody is happy or we have harmony in the team so US and Asian culture is a little bit different in the US they're more focused on just the result they're not that worried about the relationships already in Korea you guys also want to make harmonious uh, relationship. So any other question or comment about the group project? Does uh, it has different 
Hmm? A different negotiation, yes. Just let me know what negotiation you choose. If you have trouble finding negotiation, you can ask me. Then I can find you a negotiation. Okay. How to go other team to yeah. I guess they won't have the same one. There are a lot of different negotiations. So if you tell me, then I'll tell you. <coughs> Any other questions? How can you measure the team work support? Uh, just the paper is going to be. Uh, this is just everybody in the team gets the same grade. Presentation for just the communication skill is individual score. Okay. Any other question? We. We have presentation same day or not on uh, At the end of the semester, we'll have four groups, so it will be the two-hour class, so on the same day. Mm -hmm. Or you can decide on the on the Thursday class or the Tuesday class, which one do you prefer? Okay. Then let's continue with the regular class, if there is no more questions. But the last time we were finishing talking about the no deal option, we were saying that we have Mm. Yes, we were talking about that negotiation, right? And we said that we can improve our no deal option, right? So that people know that we can walk away. So then the next part is to protect your no deal option. So we don't want our no deal option to be worsened. So we said that salespeople will often try, during this course we're using the example of a car salesperson, right? They will often try to worsen your no deal option, okay? But you can also worsen your own no deal option. So, example here is a Canadian company. They needed the cash quickly. And they agreed to a nine-month period of exclusive negotiation rights with an Australian company. So the Australian company was quite clever. They said to the Canadian company, we're very interested and we think we're going to make a deal. So can you make an agreement to negotiate only with us for the next nine months? Do you understand exclusive? Exclusive means negotiating only with them. So the Canadian company said, OK, we'll agree. Right? They thought the Australian company would make a deal. So in the end, the Australian company did make a deal, but they made a very bad deal for the Canadian company. The Australian company gave them a not generous deal. Did the Canadian company have another option? Could they negotiate with other people? No, they can't. They made an exclusive negotiating agreement with one company. So they made a bargain which worsened their own no deal options. Okay? They made a deal to say, I'll just negotiate with you and nobody else. So they worsened their, their button or no deal option. And they ended up getting a bad deal. Under special circumstances, you can strategically worsen your no deal options. So one obvious example of this is the army. Here is a river. Here is a bridge. Why? Then we have the two armies. Army A here, all their fighters. And Army B. So Army B is attacking Army A. Right? What does the captain of the army do? Army A is thinking about running away. the bridge. Yes, blow up the bridge. Can they run away? Very deep and fast. 
and they run away. Hmm? What, what do they have to do? They fight. Make the new one. They have no choice, they have to fight, they right? Fight. They don't have time to make a new bridge. Right? So this can be risky, but it can work sometimes, right? It can work for the army, and then they win. They won. Okay? But they were going to run away. So that's just an example where we made our no, took away our no-deal option and we forced the, ourselves to make a deal or to do the action. So that's the main reason companies worsen their no-deal situations, to force themselves into staying with a deal or making a deal. And so uh, an example here is British Telecom and American Telecom, they made a big deal and they make no exit options in the contract. So normally the contract has some exit option that if we break up, this happens, right? But there was no exit option. The idea is that they are forced to stay together and make the relationship work, okay? Uh, in the end, the enterprise was unsuccessful and there was a very messy breakup. They took a couple of years and they lost a lot of money. So they made a mistake. But you can understand the idea that they did this in order to force themselves to work harder, to make the deal, and make each other work harder. Okay? To company make a joint venture or Yes. Joint venture. They, they joined together, a merger. Mm. But they broke up again later. It didn't work well. <clears throat> Could you explain how exit option? Exit option means that if we break up, then I get all of this, and I get all of this. Do you know prenuptial agreement for marriage? Prenup? If you're a Hollywood star, are you going to get married to some young guy with no prenuptial agreement? Do you understand prenuptial agreement? Prenuptial agreement is before you get married, they sign some document which says, if we get divorced, I keep all my money and you keep all your money. Okay? I keep the dog and you get the boat. Okay? I keep the house, you get the... so the Hollywood star has a lot of money. So there was a big problem before some people used to get married to the Hollywood star and then get divorced two years later. Why? Right? They think what do I lose? If the relationship works, great. If it doesn't work, I get divorced and I get twenty million dollars, right? So win win for me, right? So the Hollywood stars started to make prenuptial agreement, okay? So that if they get divorced, they get no money, right? So it's like a exit option is like prenuptial agreement for a company. If the relationship doesn't work, I keep this and I, you keep this. But they didn't make that because they wanted to force the relationship to work, okay? So, we can also use the example of marriage. In Ireland, in the Catholic Church, you're not allowed to get a divorce. Why? Right? If you're Catholic, you can't get any divorce. So it means there's no exit option. So you have to try to make the relationship work. Uh, in another church, you can get divorced easily. Okay? Then maybe there's some small problem, just get divorced. Why? Right? So it be different. So, uh, the last part, use the no-deal option to decide the role for negotiation. So, if we, we can have different situations for negotiation, we can have a completely dominant situation. Okay? Uh, completely dominant situation, I have a gun, I'm pointing at you, I'm saying give me your money. Is there any need for negotiation here? There's no need for negotiation, right? I'm the dominant one. Okay, so you're going to give me all your money. Okay, so if one person is very dominant, then there's less use for negotiation. Okay, or a perfect market. In a perfect market, a currency market, there's trillions of dollars traded every day, right? So the price. Can I ne negotiate about the price for selling dollars and euros with the seller? 
price in the market, there are millions of people trading in the market. The price is in the market is one euro is equal to one dollar and ten cents. Right? Can I try to negotiate with the seller? No. Say, can you sell me the dollar for one dollar and five cents? No. No, right? It's a perfect market. You can just buy from another person. Or they can just sell to another person at this price. Why would they negotiate with you? Right? So if there's a lot of buyers and sellers, then negotiation is not going to be important. Okay? Uh, so in this case, the no-deal option is a marketplace. Okay, the opposite situations, we have potential for negotiation. Both of the people have very equal power, and it's, it's not a perfect market, just me and you. Okay? So for example, I'm negotiating to buy a factory. Do you understand a factory? In Daegu, for making cars. Are there many people interested in buying a factory for making cars in Daegu? Or not many people? Not many people. So we're going to negotiating is going to be more important. Okay? About the price. There. So the the closer the power of the parties and the more imperfect the market, the more important the negotiation is. So to sum up about no deal options. So we're talking about before the negotiation, the setup. Okay, it's so it's just one part of the setup for the negotiation. Figure out our no deal option, find out the other side's no deal options. Then we find the Zopa. Okay. We have to guess the other side's no deal option. Okay. But it, like when we were selling the car, we looked online, we saw the price of the car as online. We can get an idea. No deal options can be a source of power. So we can improve our no deal option. Or we can try to worsen the no deal option of the other side. And this can influence the negotiation. Okay. So the advanced negotiator looks at the value of time spent on moves away from the table compared to time spent on the interpersonal tactics. So the non advanced negotiator, they will just spend most of their time thinking about the tactic for the negotiation, right? Or how am I going to? deal with the negotiation. But the more advanced negotiator thinks about a way before the negotiation, right? What can I do to improve my battle, improve my no deal option? What can I do to worsen the other side's no deal option? Okay. Analyze the ZOPA. Where is the ZOPA? Prepare those kind of things. Okay. So that's, do you have any question about uh, no deal options? What's the deal? External means just away from you or the other person involved in the negotiation. So somebody who's not involved in the negotiation. So this is the one we saw at the start. So find the Zopa. Make sure the other side sees you as able to walk away. Improve your BATNA. Protect your BATNA. Okay? Use your understanding of the BATNA to understand.